collectors, people trying to teach or people yep. trying to learn. You've got a massive variety of gemstones here to work yeah. with. And you don't know exactly what you're going to get. This is 300 carats for $100. Oh my Three gosh. Days. That's huge. You got some big ones over there. <laughs> and we're selling them at a really good price. Hey guys, it's Preston and Tom, and from what I understand, Tom has brought us something I think you're going to be very interested in. So I think they will be, yeah. Let's get right no to it. That's a lot of gem. It's a, it's a couple. Yeah. What do we have here, Tom? This is what we consider our jeweler mix. Whenever we get debut items in here at Jewelry Television, we have to verify stone weights, gram weights, everything involved. Got that requires us to break down one piece of jewelry, pop all the stones out, and we're selling them at a really good price. These are really exciting because Whoa. everything that you have is just an instant collection of stone. And this is kind of a random assortment, isn't it? 100% random. No two of these are alike. Uh, you're going to have natural and synthetic stones in it. Simulants, you have plastic and glass, CZs, but there's quite a few natural stones in here and really good stuff. Okay, so run us through real quick how these parcels come to be. So basically what'll happen is as everything comes in, when it's a newer piece of product, you know, we're really diligent about listing correct gram weights, carat weights, everything involved in it. So when you do something like that, you have to take the time to verify all that stuff. Yeah. So when this big amethyst comes in a ring or a pendant, we have to pop it out to verify what the weight is. That's huge. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> so when you do that, now you have to set it aside and what are you gonna do with it? So we just kind of set the stuff to the side. We'll use it for repairs. Thankfully, we do so many. We're a high volume business. Get this stuff board. stacks <laughs> and sits and waits. So that's how we get them. The rings, the pendants, the metal, that stuff can be melted down and repurposed, yes. but the gems can be reused, but they, they have to be reused for a more specific purpose. Like there's so many parameters. There. Absolutely, and even here with this large pear shape. Oh, wow. That's pretty specific. That the is cut, specific. The size, <laughs> this isn't gonna be a standard mounting you'd be able to find anywhere. You know, we go through an entire bucket of gems. If it's damaged, it's out. It doesn't go in the parcel. So these might have slight abrasions, mm. you know, little nicks at the facet mm. Junctions, some light scratches on it, but if you're an amateur lapidarist, it's easy to fix up. It's easy to polish. So what are some of the things that you can find in these parcels? I'm already seeing a couple of things. I'm seeing that's a sunstone right there. Mm -hmm. I even see um, azure malachite or something. Azure. Yeah, that looks like a blend. It's probably a composite stone where it looks yeah. like azurite and malachite. These are great examples. If you're someone who is out buying gemstones or starting to get into gemstones, there are great things in here where you do have plastic or glass, mm -hmm. so you know how to like do a heft test in your hand yeah. to say whether you have something real to really help, like very nice synthetic ruby to lower quality ruby. You got some big ones over there. Yeah, but from what I can oh see boy. here, yours has quite a bit of value. I'm seeing some lapis. I got a couple lapis pieces here. Yep. Some various opals, some synthetic, some look like they may be natural. That one looks a little more natural. This might, is that Laramar? Yeah, there's a bit of Laramar that's oh in gosh. here, but the one thing, and I'll just grab my tweezers to do it, but Tams and I. Oh. No, hold it, you didn't tonight. give me a chance to get the dichroscope yet, all right? This You've stuff's got, got at least four pieces of tanzanite in yours. I saw that the box we opened was a pile of gems. Mm -hmm. And this is how you have it in, in the office, in, in a Yeah, bowl. this is basically what we have to work with in everything that comes in these parcels. And this is why you'll have little bits of abrasions <laughs> and well, that's just a, small little scratches. That's a jeweler's term. It's a, what do they call it, bag rash or? Um, yeah, bag rash will be one, bag worn. So you're you're literally just getting a scoop, mm -hmm. putting like, it in a bag, weighing it till it gets to? Like that one here. Yeah. I'd have to do some more testing because the most important thing is don't identify just based on sight alone. Exactly. This looks like a nice morganite to me. And I'm seeing things that are like that looks like chrome diopside. Yeah, there's lots of chrome in there. There's tons of Laramar in here. Ametrine. There's a little bit of everything. And the good thing too, and I don't know if it'll show up, but you oh can even gosh. see all the fluorescence. That's your quick trick to just oh. say, what do I have in here? What's, this, what's going green here? Is that a... That would be synthetic spinel. Synthetic spinel. Makes sense. Yeah. I worked in QC for a lot of years, so <laughs> how, how all these break down and knowing what a bunch of the stones are, it, it's pretty easy to do. But 
It's also fun to just identify when you don't know what you have, because even this, you can see that purplish color. Uh -huh. I'm pretty sure I know what this is. It starts changing color no already. Way. So I think that might be Xandrite. I see some organics. Yeah. Got some pearls right there. See another one right here. Are these fresh water? I would say that the white is probably fresh water, yeah. and then the the Tahitian is going to be saltwater pearl. OK. It's a lovely color, though. Yeah, it has really good orient to it. You can see kind of a rolling color over that uh, silver base. To be honest, some of these buckets where they store this stuff all the time is almost like a dumping ground. If I have nowhere <laughs> else to go with something, <laughs> it'll go in there. So it really is kind of a treasure trove. The world's of prettiest stuff. All right, what else do I got? I'm gonna assume spinel. Yeah, that would be my guess as well. Something that that dark in color. That's a good definitely. size spinel too. Yeah, it's Looks really like good stuff. Moonstone right there. Yeah. On my side, there's a rose cut. And I see another one right here. We both have moonstone. Yep. But it's completely random. Yeah, it, it really is random. Like even going through it, like you have a dyed Ethiopian opal, some praiseolite. And of course, you know, every gemologist has their go-to, like their initial start of exactly. how am I gonna assess this? Because mm -hmm. for me, general observation is the easiest. You can tell a lot just by the overall glance at it, but I'm a fluorescence person. It kind of tells me a lot of things about it and leads me down a path to go. I mean, just going over mine as I see it, wow. I can see that with the brightness and intensity of colors that are coming off some of these, I've got some synthetics in here. Yeah. Nothing wrong with synthetics, but no. even the bright of the pearl that goes. Yeah. So the one synthetic that I'm jumping to because just the intensity of it is this one. And I bet if we put light on it, it's going to change colors because I think that's Lab Alex. Really? Just based on the color. Alexandrite has this specific color to it. Mm -hmm. It's like it's got an overall body color, but it's got a hiding color inside of it as well. You can see it. Yeah, it really It does. also depends on the light as well, but even with this light, I can see a little bit of red. Yeah, and that's the hardest thing. Yeah. yeah there you go, you can get it to change right there. So. The color change stones really are some of the most popular that we always have in inventory, mm -hmm. especially in synthetics because they're affordable, but they give a full color change. That's a very interesting cut. This was a natural ruby. Yeah, yeah, a um, nice Indian ruby. It's a fat heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> a wide fat heart. So if you're a jewelry maker, you've got tons of projects to much. Yeah. And tons of inspiration as well because you don't know exactly what you're going to get. It may inspire you to make a piece just because you got a unique ruby in this cut. Yeah, and like even in mine, just in a natural drop down, there's a match pair of garnet. And really, if you have an interest in gem identification, oh. this is the best starting if place doing, you can get. With this amethyst, I could immediately see zebra striping. And you can really learn a lot about inclusions I mean, that, just by looking at these. That looks like a, like it may be a fire opal. There was a lot of opal that ended up going into this parcel, and it was only in there simply because of the crazing inside of it, yeah. where it just dried out. Crazing is just a series of internal cracks that mm -hmm. go through it when an opal does dry out, because you know, when you think of an Ethiopian opal, it's hydrophane. Yeah. So it absorbs moisture, but it also can lose that moisture at the same time. There were a few stones that I had to look at this week that we created the skews probably 10 years ago. And when I weighed them, they were about a carat and a half less than what we originally created it at. So, so it's lost its weight because it, it's yep, dried out. Yep, it's just drying out some, so. <laughs> Hydrate your opals. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> cup of water next to it. But colorless stones. When it comes to the kind of things that can be in this parcel that are colorless, we of course have cubic zirconia. Yes. But I believe we also have moissanite. Yeah, there's a really good chance there's moissanite in here. I have no doubt that there will be one or two stones. You also have YAG, you yeah. have strontium titanate. You got some danbrite, I'm assuming. Danbrite will be in there, probably some uh, petalite. There's all kinds of different stuff. From what I understand, you brought us something to kind of demonstrate that whole process of yeah, I'm how excited these stones about this. come out and end up in the piles. Yeah, I'm excited about this. This is going to be fun. So let's see. Yeah. OK. So I see two rings. Yep, two rings. And two tools that look like they can cause some destruction. You know, I had mentioned before that we have to verify gram weights and things like that. The things with these two rings in front of us, and these are the same rings, they had a little bit of a tarnish issue. 
So I figured, why don't you and I each try to get the stones out without damage? These are very small prongs, and you're gonna have to get the very tip on there to snip it off. I like doing things harder than they need to be, so I brought a saw. So I'm gonna try to saw one of these prongs off. Okay. Too. Wait, do we even have to get the tiny ones out? Yeah. I'm gonna go for it. Try to get right there. Look. Oh! Already got it off. You act like you've done this before, Tom. I've done this a few times. I imagine it gets old after a while. Though. No, you end up dreaming about it. I can see why you would use that method of, uh, as opposed to this one. Yeah. Do you, this looks like grenade shrapnel. <laughs> the trick okay. when you do that. What you want to do is you want to get a clamp here and a clamp here and then just push in. Because what, what that's going to do, gonna and you'll even up. notice this, if you shop with jewelry television, when it comes to sizing a ring, uh -huh. two up, two down. You can't go more than two sizes up or down. Because it changes because once the you circumference do that, of the You're prong. changing yeah. the way the prong sits. Yeah. So you're either going to break the stone if you go too big, or when you go too small, pop your right stones out. are going to pop right out. You said grab right here and grab right here. Correct. So like, like that. Yep. And then, oh, yep. hey. And then you just let go of one and <laughs> tap on the other thing, and it'll knock out loose stones. That's hilarious. Well, I will say that's easier than I thought it was going to be. It's a lot easier. And then when all else fails, and you're not really worried about it, you just get an acetylene torch <laughs> and heat it, and it blobs. <laughs> you can do it with diamonds. If you've ever seen a blob of gold after a diamond melt has mm -hmm. been done on it, it almost looks like a peanut. Okay. Because of all the dimples where the diamonds rested in the top. Really? Yeah, and then they just pick the diamonds out with the tweezer, and there you have it. That's cool. Yeah. But thankfully for both of us, uh -huh. we didn't break them, didn't chip them, no scratches, and into the parcel it goes. Thanks, Tom. That's I'm telling awesome. you, if you want to break any more jewelry, I know plenty of people over hey. there that would say we would love the help. You just point me where. Yeah. It's Tom. How do we get our hands on some gemstone parcels? All you gotta do is go to jtv.com. We're gonna put a link in the description, but I do have to say, you know, this is 300 carats for $100. Parcels are traditionally one of the most popular things that we sell, but when something like this comes, they sell instantly. Yeah, jewelry makers, collectors, people trying to teach or people yep. trying to learn. You've got a massive variety of gemstones here to work yeah. with and you don't know exactly what you're going to get. And you'll have so much fun identifying this stuff because all you need is a loop and some tweezers mm -hmm. and you're ready to go. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. See you next time.